Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters and today my friends over at Academy were kind enough to send us over a sample of the new Magok 7C Gimel. This is a uh, brand new kit within the last couple of months from Academy. It's a really interesting subject, one that I haven't actually seen before. Uh, this tank is based on the M60 US American tank that the Israelis took and up armored it and added all kinds of other stuff to it. It looks really cool, kind of a space age looking tank back for the, uh, for the 80s. So let's get started on it. Okay, as we start to build the uh, tank here, the Magok 7 is based on a, an American M60 tank that the Israelis went ahead and greatly modified and upgraded. So it's kind of a bathtub hull as you can see right here. It's got most of it form. The, but to get that round shape that the M60 has, you have to glue on these, these extra panels right here and that'll give that curve shape that uh, is on the M60. So these will pop on easy enough and then we'll move on to the wheels. Okay, as we start to assemble all the wheels, the wheels come in multiple pieces and pretty straightforward and easy. I'm just going to show you how to build one of them here. These are the uh, return rollers up on the top. So that is your completed return roller wheel. And one thing that I love, as you guys know, is I love when they give you poly caps for wheels. This way we can assemble the wheel and then pull it off later when it's time to paint. It's just gonna make the, the kit that much easier to put together. So whoop, fire that off there. And real simple, the wheels. And like I told you, I like get the main part of the sanding done while it's off the sprue but then when you want to do your final sanding these foam sanding blocks are incredible for that because they won't leave any flat spots on it and you can take out any parting lines or anything on it so this is a great way to do uh, the road wheels and you get a nice smooth surface all there now, as you can see I started to do all of them but I just wanted to show you how the basics for those to go together so let's start putting all that onto the hull now Okay, and as you go ahead and start to assemble the suspension, there are four different types of uh, suspension arm that are, each one is uniquely different. So what I like to do is I like to plan it all out and just lay them all out right in front of the, the piece. So when you go to put them on, and now they have a locking uh, mechanism in here, so you can really only put them in one direction and they're, all, they're nice and secure. So just making sure that you get them in the right order, that way you won't have any problems later on when you go put the wheels on. And just like that, you've got your side of the suspension done.
here's a couple of building tips as you go forward. Earlier in the instructions, they want you to attach these brackets, uh, which I didn't find any definite marking anywhere to actually attach them. So I actually held off a little bit, knowing that they were going to attach to the uh, to the side skirts here. And I'm actually happy I did because I went ahead and attached that bracket to this to the actual side skirt itself. And then when you go to put it on, it lines up in an area that I actually didn't didn't think it was going to line up to but this way that's the bracket that's going to mount the entire side skirt so hold off on that <clears throat> another little thing you want to do they want you to attach this bracket right here these uh, front armor plates and there's not really any marks that hold it in position or anything and I wasn't quite sure where to attach it up and down on the plate so I held off on that too and I'm glad I did on that because as you go to, to attach this you want this plate to be as far up as possible so they actually meet and mate together. So that way you won't have any gap you'll have to fill later on. So I'm going to hold off on putting this piece on until we're actually fully ready to attach the top and bottom. Okay, I've gone ahead and glued the side armor on here. And the reason I did that is because on the inside of this we have a poly cap fitting that's going to hold the top and bottom on. And if we didn't get this in place right here, I just thought that it was going to be difficult to paint and then try to glue on later, uh, trying to look, you know, look as far ahead forward as possible. And so what I did was I went and lined up this portion right here and put it in place with the poly cap and then was able to attach that bottom lower plate. So the plate is now in the correct position. So you can go ahead and put it on before you glue the top on, but just making sure that you line it all up properly. So what we're going to do now is we're going to let this dry for, for a good long period of time because there's not much supporting it on the sides. And we also want to flip it over and let it dry and keep it as straight as possible so that the, uh, the armor doesn't flail in at all. So let's go ahead and start on with the next step. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, the Magok 7 is basically an M60 up-armored tank. So the turret is an M60, which means there's going to be lots of applique armor.
The turret basket is very nicely molded and looks uh, like it would give you some fits trying to put together, but actually it goes together very, very well. Uh, basically glue out the sides on first and get them into the right angle and then the back will actually just basically fall right into place. As you can see, I've gone ahead and I've glued on all the little accessory pieces that go on the turret. The machine guns, all the little brackets, the ammo cans, antennas, all the other brackets and things like that. Now the last thing I actually put on were all the, the grab handles here. And that is mainly so as we're handling it and messing with the model, we don't end up breaking all of those off because they are kind of little fragile pieces. As you can see, uh, quite a bit on that tank. Uh, Nothing difficult to put together, all went together pretty smoothly, just had a matter of taking your time and putting all the different pieces on. Uh, you'll also notice that this is not attached, and I've determined the best thing we're going to do, since we have the poly cap in the front, we're going to go ahead and pull the whole thing apart to paint, and then in the last step, we will go ahead and glue this into place. There are also a couple of other back brackets here that will go on that are kind of hard to put on once the kit is... Uh, is separated. So once we glue this all together here, we'll pop that on, we'll put these other back brackets on, as well as a few of the other little pieces that will just be easier once the kit is assembled. We will paint them while it's being painted with the rest of the model, but a little touch of super glue will take care of all of that. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to paint the entire model XF69, the NATO black, to give it shadow coat. We're actually disassembled part of it right now just so we can get uh, the good paint job all over. Okay, we have the uh, kit all disassembled and we're going to put our first coat of the XF69 NATO black on the kit. We're also going to paint the tracks up with its first base coat. And just for your own information, if you do decide you want to change the tracks out to the metal tracks from like Fruel Model or any of the other ones, these are actually Merkava tracks. They're not actually M60 tracks. The Israelis had switched them over. So let's get to painting on this. A lot of times you might notice I start off with the barrel on some of these kits, especially when they have these multi-faceted uh, pieces of, of barrel. Uh, the reason I start off with that first is to see if there is any area that I still need to work on with the sanding, because this was a uh, two-half um, barrel. And I notice there are just some few little flaws that I made a needed to sand down a little more. So I'm going to not paint anymore, uh, finish sanding those, and put another coat of paint on, and, and try to get them just perfectly smooth. Now we're going to use XF2 as our lightning coat and we're only going to hit the middle of the panels, any areas that we want the paint to look a little bit faded. Okay, while we're letting the uh, the black and white shadow and light coat dry, uh, I wanted to show you the color that we're going to mix up for, to make the Israeli color. This is a, uh, a Tyran 5 that I've made a while back 
that we beat up and weathered. But we want to get this basic color right here. Now, to me, it doesn't make that color new. So what we have to do is we're going to have to mix it up. And what we're going to use to mix that up is going to be equal parts of XF66 and XF49. And starting off with a brand new bottle and a lid and cap. Make sure we shake up the bottles really, really good. Okay, I've gone ahead and put three big squirts inside the, uh, the, the new bottle here. So we've got a line right here. So what we want to do is just draw another line of double that. And that way when we put the khaki in, we'll have an idea where we want to fill to. Okay, now that we have mixed up our uh, Israeli sand color, sand, sand gray color, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put a coat of that on it and see if we like it or not. Uh, always best to test it out a little bit first before you start spraying the whole thing to make sure it's the right tone you want. Okay, and before we start doing any more assembly, uh, we're going to take our track uh, red-brown. That is a mixture of 40% NATO black, 50% NATO brown, and 10% red, flat red. And we're just going to lightly mist over, because these tracks are mostly metal, or actually all metal. We're just going to give it a light mist coat. Not heavy, because we want the black still to be mostly there. This kind of just gives it some tarnishing inside. And that way when we do our weathering on it, it'll look a, look a lot better. Okay, I've gone ahead and done some of the assembly on the, on the kit and glued the top and bottom together. And because of that, these were the pieces that I was talking about earlier that we had to wait until we actually put the assembly together. And then we'll put some more paint on the vehicle, as well as these two little brackets in the back over here. So I'm going to put this second coat of paint on and just lightly fill those in. And then I'm going to fill in the rest and put the rest of the, uh, the main body color on. Okay, I went ahead and clear coated the entire model. And in the back of, the, uh, of this tank, there are supposed to be some like, little pieces of tarp that have a, a, a letter on it that will signify or number which tank number this is. So I used a little bit of the Nita-type blue and yellow epoxy putty. And it's a two-part epoxy putty that you blend together until you get this green. And keeping it wet, you can cut it into different shapes. Uh, now it's wet right now, so we gotta let it dry, but we kinda stretched it out to kinda look like it's a piece of canvas. And we've gone ahead and done that on both sides. Kinda pushed it slightly with a wet paper towel into it so you can see the, the ripples and stuff underneath. And I've still gotta fill, uh, take some of my fingerprints out of there, but you can start to see the uh, mesh work underneath start to show through to make it look more like it's canvas so I'm gonna take like a wet q-tip and kind of blend all those marks out but I think that's gonna look really good as the side is a tarp while okay while we're letting the tarps dry we'll start doing some of our weathering process we're gonna start using some XF69 the NATO black again and using the dry brushing technique where you knock most of it out inside a paper towel we're gonna start lightly going over some of the edges making them pop out a little bit more because we want this tank to look like it's been worn and, and used quite a bit gone through some sandstorms and you can see how it just starts to take away some of the it makes the uh, edge look like it's worn
So I'm going to keep going over that and then we'll come back, let these dry a little bit and start putting the decals on. Okay, we're going to start uh, weathering the fronts of the tracks to get it going here. And as usual, we're going to be using the Vallejo products. And first one we're going to use is the Desert Dust. Now this is the liquid wash that we put out as a fixer. So we'll pour a little bit in a little cap here. Then we're going to use today, we're using a little bit different mixture. We're going to still use our light sienna, but we're also going to add a little bit of it of the dark yellow pigment too. This will give it a little bit more of a sandier, desert dustier color. So start off by adding a little bit of the desert dust wash to the tracks. Kind of blend it all in there. And then with a little bit of the light sienna powder, start blending that in as well and that'll start to make it look a little cakier and a little a little more like dirt dust is built up inside there and then the last thing just adding just a little bit of the yellowish color and still blend that all together So that's what it looks like wet. Now when it dries, it's going to dry a lot flatter, more like powder. So we're going to let that first coat dry there and we'll come back in a few minutes. Okay, now that we've let that dry, we're going to take a little bit of the dark steel and just putting a little bit on the tips of my finger here, I'm just going to brush across the high points of the track. Okay, we've gone ahead and uh, completed the vehicle and I'm going to go over a little bit with what I actually did to it. Uh, after I did the front of the tracks that you saw, I went ahead and did all of the track itself that's visible as well as the road wheels using the different colors of dust and a little bit of the uh, desert dust wash as a fixer, but a lot of it was just put on dry to give it a little bit more dustier effect and a little bit lighter a coat. We also went ahead and using those same two colors, the yellow ochre and the light sienna, using a stippling brush just like this, just applying a little bit and brushing it into to try to give it a kind of a dirty, dusty effect as if it's been out in the desert. And living in Arizona, I have uh, first-hand knowledge what stuff looks like that out there. Also. I had a little bit of a problem with the uh, the decals sticking to the the kit wouldn't wouldn't stick very well. So I went online and I was looking up at pictures of the actual real vehicle, and I noticed great great portion of them. All of these markings were actually hand painted on the vehicle, and not very neatly all the time as well. So I went ahead and just did one by hand, did a white uh, arrow with the black outline on it, as well as on the the back over there. We sprayed the entire model with the XF57, the dust, like we normally do on all the other videos that you've seen of me. Um, and then, like I said, just taking the, the, uh, the, these things right here, the rain marks, petrol spills, and a little bit of the desert wash, I'm gonna show you what we did to the top and other parts of the vehicle. Okay, like I was showing you there, we used a little bit of Vallejo's petrol spills, rain marks, and desert dust washes. They're all liquid type pigments. And we went over here and I put like a lot of the petrol spills around the engine deck here, mixed it with a little bit of the desert dust to give it a multi-level multi, multi uh, level approach. Uh, we also did some of the desert dust around some of these areas here as if using a little bit of the rain marks as well. And that gives it a nice little effect as if it got a little bit of wetness there and the dust just kind of accumulated in all the nooks and crannies. So kind of give you a... 360 degree spin of this here and you can see how we start to put the, uh, the desert effects on all the different pieces. Uh, and one other little minor thing too is the tracks on this are a little tight so make sure that you attach your drive sprocket really strongly. You might even want to use, use the Tamiya glue and maybe even a touch of super glue up in there too just so we don't have any problem where it starts to want to bend or flex out. But uh, other than that, the kit is very, very nice. It's a cool looking vehicle, as you can see. 
Uh, lots of machine guns on it, very space age looking for the 80s and had a really good time building it. Uh, not very difficult at all, not a lot of parts too. There's something that you can do in a few days. So um, I would highly recommend you picking one of these up if you're interested in Israeli armor. It's a very, very nice kit. Also wanted to show you guys too, this was a previous video I did a while back. This is Academy's Merkava 2D and wanted to show you up alongside its uh, newer, younger big brother there. Uh, both of them look really, really good. I'm going to have to actually, actually go back and do a little more weathering on this one to match this because I'm really liking the way the weathering came together on this one. So I appreciate you watching as always and thank you. Stay tuned because we have more videos coming.